Hi, this is Robert Quimby, and I'm going to tell you about the Python package matplotlib. Matplotlib is the package you're most likely to import if you want to make a plot in Python. Um, let's start with uh, the origin of the name here. So the name matplotlib actually comes from the, the designer who uh, had a background in a computer language called MATLAB. Now MATLAB had a very powerful um, plotting packages and when that uh, computer programmer came over and started using Python he wanted to create something that he could use that was similar. So it, matplotlib follows in the style of matplotlib but it is its own uh, separate uh, Python uh, package. In this tutorial I'm going to show you just how you get set up for plotting using uh, matplotlib in Python. We're going to make some simple plots. We're going to make some uh, some simple uh, line plots and some scatter plots, and then I'll show you a little bit about how you can customize um, the plots to make them as as nice as you want. There's a, it's a really powerful package, but the the underlying philosophy is that it should be simple to make great looking plots. So we're going to start with that. Uh, if you want the full details of how you can do everything, there is, of course, a, a matplotlib user's guide, which is online. And this is a, a pretty good guide. It's It's got um, all the history and all the details you want about how to install it. And it has these great tutorials as well. Uh, so I highly recommend you look at these. The nice thing about them is that they have these kind of, this, this page with this graphical interface here. So you can actually just click on sample plots and you can see, well, should I make something like that? Or, oh, this, there's an image here. And you, you can get an idea for what you can do um, with matplotlib. And then you can actually see how you can go and, and do it. So I highly recommend you take a look through these um, if you want to get ideas of what you can do or if you have an, a question about how you do something in, in particular. But for now, we're just going to get started with the basic uh, import command. Now, one thing you're going to do if you're um, running this in a Jupyter Notebook or an IPython session, you might want to have an interactive um, uh, connection to, to your plots. Um, or you might not. You might just want them to pop up in line. So we're actually going to do the, something along the lines of the latter here. So we're first going to tell our session that we want to set up matplotlib in the inline fashion. So we're going to use this uh, percent sign here and type map um, plot lib, right? And then space and then inline. So this is a magic command called matplotlib, and it's going to tell um, the kernel how to set up the plotting. After we do that, we can actually import the package we want from matplotlib. And there's a somewhat indirect way to do this. The, the usual way to do this is we say from matplotlib, import pyplot. And we could just import it just like that, but as is often the case for these standard packages, people are busy and they want to shorten this. So it's common to rename this package when you import it as plt. And I'll just say that as plot. So we're going to import as plot. So we can do that. And now we're set to go. So we can make a plot, and this should be simple. So we're going to make um, do a few commands just to set up our data, and then we'll plot it. So I'm going to use uh, NumPy to help me make my test data. You don't have to do this, but this is just one way of conveniently creating fake data. So I'm going to make uh, x and y variables. I'm going to define my x just to be uh, a bunch of numbers ranging from uh, 0 to 10. So I'm going to use linspace. And I'm just going to go from 0 to 10. I'm going to have 100 elements in there. And then I'm going to make my y values simply be the sign of x. And actually I'll just add 15 to that. Just give a little offset. Okay, so I've if I run this, now I've defined x and y. And now we're going to plot it. So to do this, we use our, our PLT uh, matplotlib package. And that package has a method called plot. So we're going to use plot, and we're going to plot, of course, x and y. And that's it. We can run the cell, and there is our plot right there. Um, 
so that's the most basic thing you can do. You can see the nice line down, drawn on there. It, it looks decent, but of course we can do better, and we'll see that later in this uh, demonstration. The next thing I want to do, though, is I want to put some data points on there. So instead of just showing a smooth curve, which we could think of maybe as our model, we're going to add some, some individual points. So we're going to make what's called a scatter plot. So I'm going to make 10 data points. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make this variable end data. Set that equal to 10, just so we know how many data points we want to have. And I'm going to make the um, x data. I'll call it x data. Uh, similar as we did before, I'm going to use NumPy line, line space or lin space. And I have numbers from 0 to 10, but instead of having 100 of them, I'm going to just have n data data points. So 10 data points. Okay, now for the y values. I'm going to do something similar before, but instead of having data points that perfectly fit our model, um, which is not usually the case, I'm going to give it a little bit of random scatter. So I'm going to have a, a scatter, I'm going to call it y error, for the error in y or uncertainty. Uh, I'm going to make that 0 0.1, and I'm going to then define my y data to be numpy sine of x data, so this is similar to what we did before, and we added 15 before, so I'll do that again. And then on top of that, I'm going to add a random number um, that has um, a value with a, a, a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 0 0.1, my y error. And to do that, I'm going to use NumPy's random package, and I'm going to use the normal distribution, which is just the Gaussian distribution. I said I wanted it centered at 0, and I want it to have y error for the standard deviation, and I want n data points, and so that will define my y data. And see what I did? I can now plot using scatter, because I want to scatter plot, my x data, y data, and I can just plot that like that. Now what I can do is there's plenty of options um, to these methods. So if you want to change the plotting symbols, for example, the color, uh, you can do that. I'm going to change the color to red, just like that. All right. And I could just have typed R. You didn't actually have to spell out R. R is the shorthand for red in, in Matplotlib. And maybe on top of this, just because this kind of looks like a mess, just to guide your eye, I'm going to add uh, that model we had, x and y. So if I do this, now we can see that I've ran, added random uncertainty, so some of these data points don't perfectly fit with the model, but you know you can run this every time you run it, you'll get a different random distribution. They're always pretty close to the model. This should be within a standard deviation of 0.1. Okay, so there's a scatter plot. Um, when you make a plot and you have data points, you should always show the error bars. So actually I'm going to show you another way to plot this now using um, make it with error bars on there so we can see how well the, the data truly agree with the model. So I'm going to use the PLT error bar function. I'm going to plot my x data and my y data. And I'm going to tell it what the uncertainty is in the y data. I'm going to make it red again. I'm going to use C as a shorthand for, um, I'll use color color is red, and I can plot um, just like this, and you'll see what it does. It makes these error bars up here, but we, we want to see where our symbols are, so we're going to tell it to make the markers, that's the plotting symbols, make those circles. So I just do quotes and put an O, just the, the letters O, lowercase. If I run that, now it makes dots filled in dots where uh, the markers are. Maybe I don't want to connect the lines like that. That's not really telling me anything too, too useful. So I can change the line style to none. And this is in quotes with a capital N. If I do that, it turns off the, the line. And just lastly, I can again plot our model. So plt.plot plot, plot, my x, y values, it's just so we can see how well. And now you can see the error bars on there. You can see how well it agrees with this curve. 
All right, so this is kind of the basic things you can do. You can obviously plant, plot, um, plot different data, um, but there's more customization you can do to these plots to make them look better, and we're going to talk a little bit about that now. So one thing I want, want to do is I want to change the size of the plot, because this is a little bit small, the default size for me. So we can make this bigger by using, um, by modifying a state variable that comes along with plots. So if I do plt, there is something called RC params. That's RC capital P A R A M S. And then in quotes, um, so this is uh, basically a dictionary, and I'm going to say that I want to set the figure dot fig size. Fig size. All right. So I can ask it what that is, and it'll tell me right now that the default value is 6 and 4. And I'm going to change that just by saying that equal to 10 comma 7. And so now the plotting uh, size has, has been increased. And you can see this quickly if I just plot now x and y. You can see I get a much bigger plot than before. So if I go back to the previous plot, we have these little plots. Now the plot is much bigger, and all subsequent plots are going to be uh, this size until I change this. Right. There's other ways to change the figure size, but this is um, a simple way to do it at the beginning of, of your plotting session uh, so that it stays with you the rest of the way. Uh, another thing you might want to do is you might want to change the fonts. So instead of doing the RC params, I'm going to use plot.rc. There's a function uh, method, plot.rc. And as an argument, it takes um, a string that says what you want to change. I want to change something about the axes. And what I want to change is the label size. I'm going to change the, the font size from the default to 14, make it a little bit bigger. And I want to make the label weight bold. All right, so it all applies to the axes. And maybe the title size, I'll make that bigger. I'll make it a 16 point font, and I'll make that bold as well. And then just in general, for all the fonts, I want to change from the default to a sans serif font. So if I run this, I've now updated my defaults, and subsequent plots will, will have a different font. <clears throat> so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to plot everything together. We're going to have that plot with a model curve on it. We're going to have data points, and I'm going to add uh, some other things to it. I'm going to add a legend. And I'm just going to run this cell, and then we're going to talk about what it does. So if I run this, here's the results. And you can see that's a much prettier plot than we've been looking at before. We've done some customization. And here's how we did that. So first thing is I plotted this uh, model curve. I used plt.plot. I plotted my x, y values. And I told it I wanted the, the line width to be bigger than the default. I set the line width, LW, to 5 to make this curve nice and bold so it stands out better. I changed the color and I just use C as a shorthand for color to blue. So that's why it's blue. And I'm going to label this model so that when I plot the legend later it puts in the legend the name model next to this uh, curve color. Uh, Z order is a very optional thing. It just is going to put that curve in the background. So I said Z order 1 so it's going to be kind of at the lowest level and I'm going to put things on top of it. In the, so the next thing I'm going to put is actually those data points here. So I'm going to use error bar again. I'm going to plot my x data, my y data, and I set the, the y uncertainty. Uh, so that's the size of the, the height of these error bars here. That's what y error is. I'm going to make it red. I'm going to plot it on top of that blue curve so that we can see the red in front of the blue. Um, cap size is going to set the size of these caps, these end caps on either side of the error bars. By default it's not going to show anything if you, if you remember. So I'm going to make those. I'm going to have a, a circle marker filled in. I'm going to make the marker a little bit bigger. I'm going to use marker size to 10. And I'm not going to connect those points. So I'm going to set the line style to none. I could just make this LS. It does the same thing. Line style, that's the shorthand. And I'm going to label this data so that in our legend it comes out um, uh, with the label data. And then I plot it. I use X label so I can put something on the X axis. Y label, so I can put a, a name on the Y axis, and I put a title up top. You can see those fonts are bold and, and larger than before. I'll plot a grid on the background just to make it a little bit easier for your eye to, to follow. 
and then I'm going to put that legend on with legend. And the semicolon here just suppresses the um, output uh, to the screen, uh, the, the functional out, um, return from this. So again, you run all that, and you get your pretty light curve. So again, there's a whole lot more you can do. This is just kind of the, the first few things to get started. Uh, do check those uh, tutorials online to get more ideas, and have fun.